Hello, welcome to Airing It Out. I'm Josh. And I'm Jonas. And this is Jerry's little paw because he's having a nap. High five. Yeah. Awkward. Great. <laughs> um, Today we will be talking about everything that uh, is a zombie or relates to a zombie in yeah. film. Zombie movie genres. We have been teasing this for... A while. We, a, got, a we were meant to film it four days ago. Yeah, and then we got some other we suggestions. We had some car issues. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got The Matrix, we thought well, that's an easy, concise trilogy, um, and then we had some car issues that do a whole day. Actually, that being said, you you have been asked... Yes, if my, why we're making car tutorials um, videos. If you watch the video, even the first two minutes, you'll know that we know nothing about cars. Yeah. It's definitely not a clear and concise guide on how to change a car battery. The easiest answer to these, these <laughs> questions is watch the video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and um, also, I, I don't know, I was surprised because... I think it is quite obvious that the way we post and mm. also the way we write titles is in joking way. So, yeah, I, I don't I, take I, us seriously. Really it's also, I mean, seriously. that's a video that you edited that one. Um, so mm. it's actually quite funny rather than me who just leaves the whole video. Wow. Raw. And saying that this wow, is our you. second attempt at starting this. Yeah. This video because someone forgot to record the audio. It, this time it's your fault. It was, Jerry, I'm putting the blame on. Yeah. So. He has a smelly foot in our... Yeah. Yeah, he refuses space. to wash his feet. Yeah. It's pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think we're going to split zombie movies into two categories. Mm -hmm. Talk about them in two blocks. We've got slow zombie movies, which is how they started, and fast zombie movies. And because we recently watched Train to Busan 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later, yes. we're going to jump straight into fast zombies. Yes. Maybe to explain what slow zombies and fast zombies are. Fast zombies are zombies that run. Slow zombies are zombies that kind of go, you know, the classic... Oh, <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, personally, like faster zombies are scarier. But because of oh, that, there's sure. less room in the films to talk about kind of like social commentary and that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's usually part of the divide. Um, yeah. that, that slow zombies leave more room for, we're talking about the situation rather than yeah, and how people they're coming for us people. and we have to run away. Um, yeah, I mean, fast zombies are definitely more threatening to the, to the characters, um, yes. just because they can do a lot of things. And that, to add to that, like in 20 days later, uh -huh. or 28 weeks as well, it's like a drop of blood. You know, it's yeah, not yeah. even, like, a full bite needed to convert, and you're changed in, like, six seconds. Mm. And in Train to Busan, it is a bite, but you've not got very long before you start to change. Yeah, it's also either. within seconds, yeah. Yeah. Whereas stuff like Resident Evil, where the zombies get faster and faster as it goes, and then they get, like, weird expanding opening mouth things. They're more than... Oof. Yeah. It's a mad franchise. Yeah. Um... I think it's also interesting with, like, the, the way they, I don't know, refer to them as not... not z The infected. Most of the time, they don't say zombies. Yeah. I wonder if that's a thing of, like, you don't refer to things within your own... Like, mm. so, in Batman Begins, yeah, they're, they go to an opera, but in the comic book, they go to a film, like a, a cinema, uh -huh. but they didn't want to have a cinema in a movie. In a film. So it's like referring to its own medium. Okay. Which is interesting. Yeah. But I don't think that's necessary. Like, I mean, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Sharon Tate goes to a film and it's fine. It's totally fine, yeah. So I do think that. But that's awesome. also because the film is very self referential. It's very meta, yeah. 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 Um, Alas, no, I don't. I. Watching a zombie film, I think when they get close but don't quite say it. So if it's like Zeke or Z's yeah. or whatever, I World think War Z, you like so irritating. It's like you know exactly what word you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. It's fine, and sometimes like I think no, it's weird it also... when if you like find it if like in Shaun of the Dead, yeah. where they're like, don't say the zombies. Like, you know, you can joke about it, but also I think if they're like. Oh, the, the dead are coming back to life. These are zombies. And everyone's like, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. That doesn't make them any less scary. Like, the yeah. audience knows. Exactly, exactly. No, and I think it's it's also just, like, takes a bit away from the realism. Because I would say if someone was 
coming at me looking like that doing those kinds of things i would be like yeah that's a zombie i wouldn't be like oh, oh no, he probably has like yeah oh it's a rabies that turned like really weird or whatever you know yeah. it's it's um uh, that word that name i guess label exists for a reason yeah but i think um starting with 28 days later yes that film is definitely dated oh i mean just visually uh a lot of aesthetically the... The acting <laughs> choices are very early 2000s. Oh, yes. It does. I mean, you just have to imagine, like, a early 2000s music video, and you will have all those kinds of yeah shots in there. With like, 100%. But I think it's, it's interesting because most of the film is quite okay, but then you just get... It's like, the odd, few, weird thing. Yeah. Like a weird... Dutch angle shot that's too close and too fish eye, and you're like, oh... What yeah? What do all these me- words mean? Maybe explain Dutch angle is if the camera isn't like tilted, but it's slightly slanted. Yeah. Yeah. We we can't demonstrate because the camera's on a tripod. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. But, but you it, can imagine. Yeah. So if the if the horizon line is not straight, actually horizontal, but it would be slightly off. Slightly off. That's yeah. a Dutch angle. Um. And just I, a lot of the. the th- Faster. I mean, fisheye is really odd. That's like a GoPro camera, so the mm. lens starts to curve at the end. Mm. Um, yeah, it's also there's just some like very quick cuts that have like an effect on them. Yeah. Which are just a bit. <laughs> okay. Cool, you can do this. <laughs> yeah. um, but it has its upsides. Like, I definitely, like, thinking back on it, even though we only watched it like three days ago, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh no, I, I think of that film fondly and mm-hmm. kind of just pass off that the dated stuff is dated oh absolutely i mean that's part of the film i think yeah no no for sure and i think it does it's not bad it's just like oh okay i know exactly when this film is made yeah which i is definitely isn't a bad thing i yeah. think it definitely does a good job of showing that the infected are a threat mm-hmm. and that people are like terrified of them yeah. And, like, they are sprinting after you to get you. If you get yeah. even, like, scratched, you're changed instantly. Yeah. Um, it, it's good. And then having... It's very good. It does manage to have, like, the humans be the villains in the end anyway. Yeah. Which is a, is an impressive and a nice twist. And... Yeah, I do I do think it definitely combines the just the zombies being a threat, but also, like, social issues. Mm-hmm. I don't think you get the... In in-depth, like, social commentary that you would get in, no. like, Dawn of the Dead, so where you've got one of each mm. kind of character archetype. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas instead you've got, you know, soldiers bad. Mm. Um, but even, I think that's fine. Like, what the, the film's quite contained. Yeah. Relatively short. I think it was interesting that it was so split up, though, between just, like the open world and then the whole army base kind mm-hmm. of thing. So those were two very separate sections of the film. Yeah. I think, um, but very impressive start. I mean, the movie, not the prologue, but like the movie with our main character. Yeah. when Killian Murphy. Exactly. Walks through London for like a good 10 minutes and, and every they single did not shot. film it during a quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> so they, but yeah, they shut down completely London. alone in like, Crossing, I don't know what I bridge, don't know the that bridge. Is. It's the one next to the Parliament buildings and Big Ben and stuff. Yeah, but he's like um, downtown London, and, and it's big shots where you've got like empty. whole streets. And definitely, like if you're doing a normal film and you've got mm. even two hundred extras to kind of like, yeah, be in the city. And if ten people sneak in, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. You know, they're just people walking about and, in the background. Yeah, but um, this was completely. But obviously, if you get one person that shot, you're yeah. You're done. Um, so, yeah, but I think what they did is they had it in the morning, like, mm-hmm. super early. I think they filmed in summer. Mm-hmm. It was, like, four or five in the morning. And they Fair had, enough. I think they had, like, one hour to film each day for a week. And they, they got it all done. But even, like, so, like, obviously the streets are covered in, like, newspapers and, and trash, graffiti yeah. and stuff like that. So they must have had people just sprint out, completely yeah. live to the place, film as much as they could, and then clean it all up. Yeah. Before, I mean, rush hour starts. That's true. Yeah, I mean, they had to, like, flip the bus. Yeah, yeah, like... That was crazy. It's incredible. So good on them well for doing done. that. It's also, well I mean, that's done. a low-budget film. 
as well, which definitely mm. um, didn't, no. didn't hurt. Yeah. Good job, good job. Good job. Gets a gets a thumbs up thumbs for up. sure. Yeah. Um, I did I did like like when I when I watched it and they they were at the um army base and this guy was like um the whole thing about now there are women here so we can survive and outlive mm. the the zombies. Yeah. Um I was like, "Oh, this is really bad." Um but I definitely got vibes from Children of Men. You know, the whole thing oh, of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the human race won't survive without women, you know? Yeah. So, um, like... That's cool. That's, uh, I've only seen that film once. It was very hard watch. Mm. Not in a bad way, but, like, that's... Uh, so, that's where everyone's infertile. Mm. Um, I've I had Jeff Rose on there. Yeah. That's a big one, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, interesting. No, it's, I think it's quite... I mean, it's so British, the film <laughs> um so you oh, don't really get that scale of the world which makes it seem like i mean it is only a month mm-hmm. and i think the whole time you're probably thinking the guys up in the highlands are probably okay yeah um which Where makes the whole the like end, yeah. military survival thing just a little bit more rapey rather than yeah. human survival which is fine i think that actually works for the film's benefit uh-huh, uh-huh. of making them kind of like the villains um, oh absolutely whereas if it was a yeah. case of like i mean because Kelly murphy and naomi harris mm-hmm. get together in the end anyway mm-hmm. so in terms of like pure human survival that's happening that's yeah. fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think like so yeah the way you don't works. get any news from from anywhere so as a viewer and I guess also as as the characters, you have no idea if it actually is just in London is or like is it is it I mean, I in England or is as well because it's so obviously contagious. Yeah, it's not something you'd ever sneak on a plane or like that. Yeah. So presumably it would take a bit of doing to spread across the world, but they do acknowledge that in the sequel. They do. Um, and even actually, just in terms of like Highlands, they have that in. I mean, they do even the in twenty eight days. Because they say, like, the, uh, one of the, well, the first guy he meets is like, yeah, I went to the airport and everyone tried to get on the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but couldn't get on it. But and couldn't get on it. Infected. But they don't acknowledge ever what's happening in the rest of the world. Yeah, absolutely. And so you'd assume if, like, a virus got out in Britain of that nature, it wouldn't spread very easily mm. out of the island. Mm. Um, but no, they do kind of talk about, or see, you see what happens in the highlands because that's where they end up. Or maybe Mount Snowden? kind mm-hmm. of area like in wales mm. um but definitely wilderness yeah um or british wilderness you know british wilderness rolling green hills <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see like there are infected yeah. about so there is that kind of threat there so it mm. could have spread across the whole of the uk for sure it's it's interesting that they would because at the very end they they seek help from like fighter jets flying over the country looking for survivors i assume and they um sew together like huge sheets uh, yeah. to spell out hello why wouldn't you write sos first of all much shorter second of all much shorter. What universally is, recognized what is hello hello <laughs> like, we're in our little cottage do you want to come save our lives oh no that was a weird one i think watching it i definitely was thinking i prefer 28 weeks later mm-hmm. i think in terms of a more it ticks all the boxes mm. without being so dated in actually watching it, I have not seen these films in a while until the other day. Yeah. Twenty years later has its problems. That it has glaring problems, like huge but the first thing was they were so glaring. Yeah. That I had removed them from my memory. Yeah, that's fair. I was just like, You're like, oh, this happens. I'm like, this is bad. Yeah, like <laughs> so. I think the opening of Twenty Eight Weeks Later is uh-huh. one of the strongest scenes. Oh, it's in a brilliant. zombie film. Yeah. I'm willing to say I think it is close to perfection because you start with this cast of characters you know you've got the kind of couple they're mm. they're making the can and you see there's some old people there's the kind of tough guy mm-hmm. there's the girl whose boyfriend's left to get supplies and he's gone he's the gone asshole that's telling her like he's gone yeah um you've got this whole cast of characters you're like okay this is who we're spending the film with yeah this kid comes in you're like okay the weak kid that needs to be protected fine yeah and then instantly after that they get overrun Everyone except one character dies. Dies, yeah. You know, it's such a classic um, alien thing where like you meet a bunch of characters, 
and a number of them just die. Straight up. Yeah, so you yeah, don't yeah. know who you can follow. No, for sure. I think that does character. it does a really good job of kind of bucking the trend because obviously the 28 days later is so contained. Mm-hmm. And so you start with that at the same in weeks. And that's for a British production. Fair enough. Mm. You know? And then to just go, nope. Also to make is... it very clear how dangerous they are. You know, you yeah. know they're instantly, you know, they're yeah, a threat. They're coming, they're spreading. Mm. Um, that's good. And then in terms of seeing how, like, the virus progressed and, like, okay, they wiped the country. Mm. We're clearing out the areas, we're repopulating. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, that's smart. Much more kind of social social distancing i guess yeah <laughs> like it is though it's like yeah. okay how do we got do so that? many like it is pandemic stuff yeah yeah because it's also infection and also the way it spreads is like okay you have to be get in contact with the blood so it's like okay it's 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 very close to what's going on right now <laughs> in, a, in a way it's uh, no for sure and then jeremy renner's in it and mm-hmm. i really like him as an actor I think he, he does plays that. those parts just so well. But that kind of like badass devil maker kind of like usually the same military thing as hurt yeah. locker. Yeah, that's why I do think a Hawkeye film would have been great if you just had him being that kind of like mm. he knows what he's doing, he can do it. And gets but then it I wonder is it the is it the same thing as like he works as a side character? But like no, he, because in Hurt Locker he's, he's also the main character, main and I argue he lasts longer in 28 weeks later like when i think of that film i think of him as the main character and the child wow. actors is there interesting i mean because the 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 dad yeah. dies pretty quickly spoilers um uh, pretty, pretty early he on he's die oh yeah well, they, i mean they get him for the yeah they're gonna use the actor um, um oh yeah because he's not like he gets infected he gets infected pretty early on so in terms of characters you follow, you are following Jeremy Renner, the lead science officer, and the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And for me, Jeremy Renner's the most compelling. The kind of science officer fails to kind of get stuff done a bit. Also, you just don't spend enough time with with her to, yeah. to really get that. Yeah, I think that in saying how brilliant the opening is, mm. it also comes with the problem of, like, you don't spend time with the characters that end up being the main characters are the ones you follow and so you don't have that yeah and i think putting a film on child actors is risky nothing against vicky of course yeah what what are you trying to say (laughs) that's a kid's film no it is risky that's a kid's film yeah as well which makes it easier i think but for a r-rated what 18 Mm. zombie film Mm. to pin itself on two children is no um and the children don't differ that much either. Like, it's not like one's looking after the other. No. They are both on the run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah. I definitely think Jeremy Renner carries that film, for me anyway. For for a good portion of the good film. Good portion of it. I forgot how early he died. But then it's also not early, because... But there is one... I don't want to say one act, but one uh-huh. scene after that. Yeah. Which is by far the weakest in the film. It's... So they end up in this... Oh, dark tunnel. So he's dead. So it's only the two kids and the scientist. And then they're like, okay, we need to get to the stadium. Best way to go there is through the underground. Subway, yeah. The yeah. Underground. Um, and so they go in. Electricity's out. So it's pitch black. And they only have a gun with a night vision scope. scope. Um, and they film it through the scope. And it's not done well. Like, it can no. be done... I think if you think of Sicario, yeah, that's probably the best. That or Zero Dark Thirty, the mm. best uses of kind of night vision cinematography mm-hmm. that I've seen. But filming that's, that's just not through even the, the scope problem. is, I think no, because if you had it in night vision, away, so yeah. you know that you know the characters can't see, but it's like you're getting a glimpse of you can still what they see. Can see. But if you've ever like followed, I mean, I think Hardcore Henry is a terrible movie, but it was filmed all in first person, mm-hmm. and you just see how difficult it is to follow mm. something in that angle yeah if you've not got your field of view out enough which they mm. definitely don't it's really contained yeah and yeah it's disorientating for the audience it's disorienting for the characters you could argue that that's good but it just means you're like i have no idea what's going on yeah it's also not like scary because i would i would then 
have like jump scares because like you don't see a lot of things so you wouldn't see something coming but the jump scares are only for the characters not for the audience yeah. and so it's like it's not it doesn't do anything it just looks weird and then uh but i don't think that's even the issue i had with that section it's mm. like it didn't do anything they like, just it was just a way to get rid of so the science, yeah, the scientist smart. dies as well. Yeah, um, but it was just a, a way to to kill her. Yeah, just to get rid of her. Just so you got two kids. Um, I don't know. It was it was, it felt forced, very very forced. No, for sure. And I didn't like that. For me, I yeah, I honestly forgot that entire section was in the film. I knew Jeremy Renner died, mm. and I knew they got picked up in the football field mm-hmm. probably field whatever it is um Wembley stadium sure mm. could be a tennis pit for all i know um that's court. football soccer Ugh. for uh, the american viewers out there no yes but i knew that happened but i just kind of in my head had jim renner push the car and then them get to the stadium and mm. he dies then and then they kind of went underground and i was like wait a second i completely mm-hmm. forgot the rest of the film happened but i think yeah. up until the gas bit I enjoy it. I think there's a bit more social issues. Yeah. You've got someone that's actually able to handle himself. Not well, because obviously it's a tricky situation, mm-hmm. but can actually put up a bit of a fight rather than just pure running. Yeah. Um, which we've kind of seen the, the film before anyway. Mm. Um, but I just think I add, add something new. You up the scale, you see the whole kind of the government solution is just to pull the switch. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know, the way they, when it breaks out, the way they react to it is really strange. Like, they do shove everyone in in a room, like, to isolate them, I assume. Yeah. It's like a group quarantining, but first Once thing that happens... A guy breaks in, no problem. A bright... Like, what? The thing is, I that understand, is like, the thinking of it, of, like, um, you know, if you can keep everyone away and safe yeah that means no one can get infected yeah but the but the way to do it would safe. definitely be keep everyone in individual rooms and lock the doors from the outside yeah so that they can't get out no one can get in yeah etc because once obviously anyone gets in that room you're kind of done i do like i really really like the scene where the snipers are taking out mm-hmm. infected from the roof as they're running in yeah. and they have to make that switch of like okay now we just yeah free target no and that's a very good like social thing like and it gets explained uh by the scientist who's like we have <laughs> You're destroying my arm oh sorry. sorry uh we have these code red which is like this procedure uh yeah. isolate everyone if it breaks out we have to start gunning down the infected and if we lose control then we just have to take everyone out um i think that's an interesting moral situation to put yourself in and Oh, for sure. Um, you're kind of like, oh, that's terrible. Then you're kind of thinking, oh, actually, like, that's probably... Because the way the infected work there is if you kill them, they they die. They're you dead, know, yeah. so it's not the same as, like, oh, you need a headshot or anything. So if you kill a person, that's someone that can't come back. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it makes sense from that point of view. Mm. Um, yeah, I definitely I, I enjoy seeing that kind of situation play out because yeah. it's something that probably would happen. And they end... <laughs> I think it's an interesting end to also be like, now zombies are in, or infected people are in Paris. So, you yes. know, they've hit the mainland. And in a way that, that kind of means like, okay. That's the world. The world, That's like it. humans will will die or everyone's going to be infected. Which is kind of like a... I think it's a nice way to do that without having to make the same film again. Oh, yeah. Like in terms of, so they, they have a kid that's kind of immune and he, so with, it, if you have lots yeah. of dye, something, eyes, different color eyes. Yeah. That makes you kind of, you've got the virus, but you're just a carrier. Yeah. Um, and so he flies into, they fly into France, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I guess it kind of is just presumed that he spreads it yeah. accidentally. And then you can infer from what you've just seen that that situation has just happened in Paris. And then that's, that's it. So mm-hmm. I think it's a good way so that you're not like, oh, we need to make a third film where it's just yeah. more of the same. It's implied. Um, I think the films did well financially, so mm-hmm. I think it's a nice way to tie it up without 
running into fatigue. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, no, and it could be like if you do ever want to make a film, that's a point where you can pick up. It's yeah. Like, okay, this is what we showed you in an epilogue. That's gonna be our prologue, and we'll continue from there. I don't know, but it was a it was a weird kind of because to me it just said everyone is dead mm-hmm. because everyone's infected now. I mean, the first so one kind of like a happy a, note, so you've gotta gotta switch it up. Fair enough. I definitely think twenty eight weeks holds up better than twenty eight days. As in, like a. I mean, it's less for now. dated. Yes. Um, and if I had to sit and watch one, I would probably choose twenty eight weeks and then just turn it off for the last fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, and so I I don't think I would because twenty eight days for me just works on its own more as as a whole film. Like I don't have any issue with like glaring yeah. issue with any of them. And saying that, yeah, film that I would happily watch again. It's Train yes. to Busan. Yes, very good film. So it's a Korean zombie film yeah so we we taught ourselves a bit of korean so we could watch it um Mm -hmm. we're not quite fluent yet so subs not dubs of course yeah you want to watch it sadly it's off prime now so you've got to pay for it which is a bit of a shame Mm. but that's okay it is definitely worth renting i don't think it's It's worth owning i don't know how often you want to watch films like that back to back like it's very Mm. i'd say it's kind of a middle ground between the two it's very contained Still, in terms of size, of the, yeah, in terms of scope club, of yeah. the film, so there's not a lot it's to kind definitely of... better than both of them, yes, but there's film. not a lot to kind of come back and re watch, yeah. You're not going to get anything new from the experience, you'll definitely oh, pick it yeah. up first time, so it's not like you have crazy fights, you don't have a really brilliant opening scene, yeah, there's no particularly um, scary sequence, yeah, so kind of, but without every anything being like standout, yeah. It is all of a very high level. I think it stands out as an entire film. It's a package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've done. Incredible. They've got the characters that you kind of expect to have in this uh-huh. kind of film without being cliche. Yeah. Um. So you've got. I mean, there's a, a cricket. No baseball. There's a baseball team on the train. Hmm. Um. But none of them are like overly jockey. But yeah, he's definitely a baseball player. You hmm. know that that makes sense. You've got the corrupt businessman, which is. Yeah. Just out for himself, you know, and the kind of, are people selfish? Who's helping each other? The mm-hmm. morally the great people, protagonist. The, the pregnant woman. Yeah, you, you tick all the boxes yeah, without yeah. you... I mean, it's what you expect on a train. Yeah, which is also so brilliant. Like, yeah. they just... It makes sense for these people to be in that situation. It, it is perfectly contained as a, as a space, but also because you are moving from they, A to B, you get new situations from that. 100%. I mean, that's the Very clever. golden ticket there is like, because they jump a. off the train sometimes and then yeah. they're in an environment and then they're back on a train. But it's like, you're not just stuck in one building. Mm. And when you do leave the building, you're in a different place every time. Yeah. Which is really smart. Mm. Um, in terms of, the zombies being a threat that's definitely so mm-hmm. like you convert quickly yeah they don't even really like kill any zombies like outright no you don't really see it happen so you don't even know is it like a head thing or mm. you know do you just have to knock them out they really just are fighting their way through the train sometimes yeah, yeah. um and it's definitely also some some things of learning what the zombies are like mm-hmm. i think that's cool so if they don't see you, they don't attack. Attack, yeah. So it's the whole darkness. Thing. Darkness. When they go into a tunnel. Yeah. Um, smart, smart. Done, done very well. Um, and also, so yeah. But, yeah, so the zombies definitely react more to audible. Sound and sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah sound yeah. and sight. Um, yeah, and that definitely works for the film really, yeah. really well. And the character actually grows, so it's not a guy who's just kind of fighting by. He starts off a bit of a dick mm. and actually grows into a loving father by the yes end. he does sacrifice himself very nice um yeah just a great film yeah I would definitely give it a watch yeah 100% check it out yeah. um we have recommended it before we've but recommended it before but definitely. now it's like we, in terms of zombie films I think it's yeah a peak I do want to say though because uh-huh. we watched the trailer for the second one and yeah. you did not like it Oh, it's just a very, very different film. It it seems like a classic uh, action. We're just going to shoot, run and gun, blow stuff up, and, 
you know, it's just having zombies as an excuse to be as action heavy as possible. See, for me, I don't like that. I'm, so I, I'm in. Obviously, I think there's a risk that it's the classic kind of a really good film gets a sequel that becomes just a mindless action thing picked up by mm. a different director, and mm-hmm. you kind of lose everything that made mm-hmm. the films great. Mm-hmm. So, like Terminator Three, Aliens Three. I don't. I I wouldn't be scared of that because I'm also like I'm happy to just separate the two and not see them as. But this is why sequel. I'm actually hoping. Yeah. That they do it really well because Train to Be Sound, the first one, yeah, is a perfectly contained small scale zombie film. Yeah. In terms of you're always in one location with one character, it's, mm-hmm. you don't even fight the zombies. It does that really well. Mm-hmm. Which is what Twenty Eight Days Later is. Mm-hmm. In terms of theme, so they are running from the zombies, they're trying to survive. In 28 weeks, the thing that makes that film interesting and compelling is you've got someone that's actually able to put up a little bit of a fight. Yeah, they're starting to fight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I think if they are able to do the equivalent of what they did with Train to Be Sound for the sequel, uh-huh. and if they're like, okay, we're going to do a... We're combating the zombies, or we're trying to survive now, rather yeah. than just run, we're like, okay, we've, we've set up... Because it's a good amount of time after. Mm-hmm. It's like the whole world's done. Or at least the country. Um, yeah. So it looks as though it's a bit more like, okay, this is how we survive in an apocalyptic world rather mm-hmm. than how we survive the outbreak. Yeah. If they do that to the same quality they did the first one, mm-hmm. I am more than happy to I see them succeed. The, the trailer was just not convincing on that scale. No, but it definitely shows you what genre they're going for. Yeah. It's a genre switch. Oh, it's a, it's they are definitely introducing a very different kind of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy to see if they manage to do... I'm in the same way, actually, The Raid, in terms of other foreign films that are good, mm-hmm. Raid 1 is a very contained action film that does yep. that very well. One building, they're fighting their way through it. That's it. Whereas Raid 2 ups that with, you know, a plot, more mm-hmm. action, longer fights, mm-hmm. more in-depth characters, mm-hmm. and does that really well, too. And I like them yeah, both equally. Enough. Yeah. And if it can do that, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I have to say, Train to Busan also surprised me in its, in its effects. Like, one of the effects that I love is actually the, like, a... Uh, the horde. The horde. I mean, there there are a few times when it's like they, they break through a door that was sealed mm. or something, and it's just, like, a mass of people. Yeah, I'm sure they have some dummies in there, but, like, it looks so cool because yeah. I think it is a practical effect for the most part. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of it's CG. But then it's done really it's well. It's done Because incredible. it actually it's the looks same like it's World a War bunch Z. of people just going flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same as World War Z in terms of like that huge pack of... They do climb things. on each other. Yeah. But not too much. You know, it's still a realistic scale. Yeah, it's not where they're like climbing up giant walls, which is just a bit insane. Yeah. Um, but no, so I, I think it, it does do really well. I'm, I would be very surprised if it's not got a lot of computer elements in it. But the fact that we're even debating this means that it doesn't matter yeah. because it's done perfectly. Yeah, um, that is true. Really that is true. And also, it does it shows that you don't need super exceptional makeup. Like, I mean, those the zombies wear contact lenses. Yeah, milky, and are kind of washed out with makeup a bit and a bit of blood. Um, yeah, compared to something like The Walking Dead, where you've got like face tearaways and guts sprawling. It's like the makeup is obviously incredible, but it's not required to make. No. A great zombie film. As long as they're threatening and scary, which yeah. they definitely are. I think it's... I mean, <laughs> it is funny to me because, like, zombies also just, like, to make a zombie a zombie, they have to walk weirdly and make, like, weird sounds or, or whatnot. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like that's a funny and, and weird thing mm. uh, to be a thing, but they definitely do a good job. Like, the... The yeah. actors who... The zombs. The zo- zombie actors do a good job at doing that. Like, some of the... The way they just, like, bend their bodies, like, yeah, actually yeah. looks... Contorted. Yeah, looks... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, for sure. Props to that as well. Shall we talk about the... Slow zombies. Slow zombies. Go- a little bit, yeah. OG. Um, so definitely, like, I mean, even the way they started with, like, Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. started with a lot more social commentary having the I final survivors. That. That's so let's 
Well, so tell the, us. the final survivor in that is a black man, mm-hmm. and he gets killed at the end by a group of hunters that are out mm-hmm. cleaning out the, the zombies. Um, and he's kind of mistaken for a, a monster, would be the social term. Yes. Which, in the time that that came out, so it was the 70s? Yeah. Definitely very relevant, very good way to put that yeah. in, in a film that people will go and see and not expect that. Um, yeah, I, I would assume it's also something that is enough below the surface that some people might not pick up on it. Yeah. Um, sure. But definitely obvious enough that most would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's I think, smart. I mean, that's George Romero. And then he went on, of course, to do the Living Dead series. There's tons of them. Mm. Um, and that kind of the pinnacle of that, I think, is Dawn of the Dead. Most people would agree. I've seen most of them. I definitely think so. The, the zombies start to kind of evolve as they go. Uh-huh. So they start using guns in. Oh. I couldn't even tell you which one it is. It came out quite re- recently, 2009, 2008, the last That's one. That's interesting that. because most of the time, zombies are just dumb. Ugh. And the fact that they are. They don't tire is yeah. actually the thing that makes them so threatening. So well, they can just. If you look keep at something like Walking Dead, yeah. in the first season. They have, the zombies are a little bit smarter, so you can see them trying to, like, smash open a window with a brick uh-huh. and stuff. And wow. then they go back from that, and they kind of change their direction, which is interesting. Wow. So Homo habilis, using tools. Oh, wow, someone knows their last <laughs> Um But, yeah, I so I think... That's correct, but... The yeah. Dawn of the Dead, I think, is the kind of staple of slow-moving uh-huh. zombies, a group of characters that are all very much archetypes of okay. people... Um, and I think the remake, it's 2005, is pretty good too. Mm. Okay, I mean, it's, it's not dated. I haven't you know? seen any of these. You're not? No, okay. So no. we, we do need to watch the remake. So it, it's just what you'd expect a 2005 zombie film to be, really. Sure. Um, is it all, most of them, then social commentary rather than, yeah, because if they are slow... I don't know. I think so that's... the zombies are a threat that forces people together that wouldn't usually come together. Okay. Into stressful situations, which makes people okay be themselves and be selfish or be kind. And... Because honestly, I I haven't seen much of The Walking Dead. Only like the last, the last season. two seasons. I've yeah. seen all ten now. Yeah. Although admittedly, I might be a half season behind because it is so bad that yeah. I'm honestly not keeping out. Keeping I have out to say, just out. from seeing. A couple of episodes I was already annoyed that your title I mean the title is The Walking Dead so you would expect that to be the main issue but they are so non-threatening yeah well this is the problem with Walking Dead I think though is that zombies are not a threat until all of a sudden they are and someone will get bitten so but for for no reason you know there's no reason why that should happen no, 100%. So I think, actually, full spoilers for The Walking Dead, because at this point, who cares? <laughs> um, yeah. So they had season eight, nine, nine maybe, Carl, yeah. the son of Rick, the yeah. character, um, got bitten randomly, saving some random dude that just popped up in the show. Yeah. And this is years into the apocalypse at this point. The yeah. fact that anyone is getting bitten doing something stupid like that is insane. Because mm. essentially, like you can't bite through leather. Yes. Right? That like, people just can't. You know, it's not possible. So why does everyone just wear biker leathers? And stuff like that. Or, like, in season four or five, yeah. they all start wearing riot armor. Brilliant idea. You know? And then they just... Don't? Stop. Yeah. You know, they, they don't anymore. It's like, oh, I'll just go out for a quick thing. I won't need it. And you're like, just, come on, man. Yeah. Still a threat. Yeah, yeah. Um, or they've gone from... I mean, they had stockpiles of guns. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, they've raided multiple huge warehouses of guns at this point. And then they're like, oh, no. I'm, gonna I'm running out of stick. spears. You know, yeah, like, <laughs> multiple characters using sticks. I'm like, I just don't think that's the most effective one. Or knives. Like, it's not that hard to find, like, a machete or a sword. There are plenty around. Yeah, yeah. You know. Get a bit of distance. For sure. I yeah. just... No, and I think what's annoying is, like, you, they do build up a lot of social issues really well. So, like, you have different mm. groups that run, like, their state, I guess, differently. So they, they start yeah. a different kind of rule uh, system. Um, but only... then they don't... 
what what actually ends up happening is not that they fight off each other it's still always the zombies that come in to like make it escalate i'm like but they don't you don't know to. i think like so they, they don't had actually uh, a whole thing going with mm. megan who's the main villain for far too long he's a really interesting character the way he ran his state was good he's but he never really fleshed it out yeah Whereas, I mean, there's only so many times you can fight groups. They've done it with multiple groups now. They've had little things against and stuff. Mm. And some of them are like, okay, these people are obviously evil. But it's more interesting, I think, where you're against groups that are just similar. Like, you know, there's the trash people, which is just ridiculous. Like, no one would choose to live in a giant dump that much. <laughs> tank. Um, but I think my favorite group was way back in season four, I want to say. Uh-huh. And there were like the... Way back. Well, that's six, seven years ago now. Uh-huh. Um, but they were like scavengers that Daryl found himself with. Uh-huh. And their whole thing was like all claimed. And there was only like five of them or so. Um, and they would like, oh, okay, you know, you see something, you say claimed, and that that's yours, that's your thing. Mm. Um, so first come, first serve, really. First come, first serve. Yeah. Within the group. And there was only a couple of them. You know, so it worked out well. And like, you know, they find a place to sleep and people are like, oh, claimed, this is my pot for the night. And nice. it's fine. You know, they all survived. They were all very capable survivors yeah. and stuff. And in just surviving, um, Rick got stuck in a house where they were in. And this was when Rick was in his psycho Rick mode, mm-hmm. full beard. The beard showed how mad Rick was getting. Um, okay. And he was in the house as they came in. And him just assuming that everyone is out to kill him, killed a guy to get and sneak out the window. Ah. So he killed a member of the group unprovoked. Yeah. You know, there's nothing there. So they start to kind of chase down Rick and Carl. Yeah. Um, and Daryl's in this group un- not knowing that it's Rick that, that's killed him. Yeah. And obviously Rick and uh, Daryl are friends. Yeah. They meet up with each other. Like, they finally catch up. And Daryl's uh-huh. like, oh. This guy. This is, ah. Yeah. Tricky. But then he also knows that he did kill him. So there is that kind of oomph. And if you were following the other group and Rick wasn't in character, you'd mm-hmm. probably be on their side. It's like, well, this guy's killed a member of the group unprovoked. Yeah. Really paints a moral dilemma. Yeah. And it's like, no, we want our That's revenge, smart. obviously. Yeah. And then it ends with uh, Rick bites the guy's throat out. You know, he's threatening to kill um, his son, Carl. And he just, he, he gets him and he's like, oh, what, what are you going to do? And he just bites out. And you're like, you're, it's, it toes the line between good and bad so perfectly because you're like yeah he's protecting his son but they're only after him in self-defense and this is a really horrible way to kill someone you yeah know? like he's got his beard is all red and bloody and wow. like <laughs> but that i think that's where the show like peaked in terms of you had a group that had their own survival mechanism yeah you can't really group. root for any of them you're not everyone's kind of gray there was no these guys are cannibals or these people are just yeah you know, messing you over, or this guy's yeah. killed two of you to show his dominance, like Negan did, and it's like, mm. great. they're obviously you know, evil. Yeah, they are. They are the villains of the show now. Whereas if you just had two groups that were surviving their own way, but they clashed yeah. without even knowing that they clashed, make it situational like that. Yeah, that's honestly. So I would say, if you're gonna watch Walking Dead, watch up to the end of season five. I think would be the perfect spot. And be like, okay. Hmm. Um. So the first five seasons definitely have a lot of really good moral situations like that. Okay, okay. Which is what this whole genre is for. Fair. Is it? Yes. Putting people in difficult situations and seeing how... Seeing how it plays out. Seeing how they play out. In saying that... How would you rate Zombieland, then? It's not a zombie film. It's a comedy. It's a... But is, for, it, is it not a... For one of the only zombie films with zombie in the title, yeah. there is hardly any zombie. They've got the opening, which has, like, the rules thing, the yeah. montage, whatever. Yeah. And then they've got the final battle. Mm-hmm. The middle portion of the film has almost no zombies in it. That's true. It's a road trip movie. It is a road trip movie. Yeah. And I think it's fine for a fast zombie film. The zombies are very non-threatening. Yeah. I mean, they've got no problem. Like, I mean... Imagine if you had 10 guys running at you and you had a double bow shotgun. You can only fire twice without reloading. Yeah. They, they never seem to mind. It's like, oh, as long as you've got your card, you can keep up. Like, you're running fast. Like, whew, you know. And I think that summarized when, like, all the guys are around Woody House and he's in a little box and he's just like... <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Like, that's not what the film's trying to be. So oh, definitely not. Fine. I think It it's... is trying to be funny. It has Bill Murray in it. I know. I think it's adequately funny. I didn't see the sequel. I'm 
don't think I've seen the sequel either. No. Last year? It did ah, really no, then definitely not, no. Definitely not. <laughs> if it's worth watching, let us know. Yeah. Down below. But, yeah, I think another genre, though, actually, speaking of all, comedy, yeah. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Brilliant. Oh, yes. I think it does it really, really well, because it's still... It's still funny, like... it. Yeah, it's actually funny, rather than Zombieland, which is American humour, which... <laughs> I mean, well, we're, I'm British. It's different you know? humor. It's very different humor. It's much more over the top. Uh, mm. I like something a bit more dry, personally. Yeah. Obviously, humor is so subjective, though. So, if Zombieland's more your thing, sure, I would definitely recommend watching both. Yeah. You know, and picking which ones. No, but Shaun of the Dead is definitely more dark humor, more dry. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. It tickles my pickle more. No, I mean, it's also just like the style. I like Edgar, Edgar Wright. Wright. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, but I think it also does a good job of, like, so you, you start with, I mean, it's not a zombie film in the start, and you learn about these characters, and you yeah. care for them, and then they start putting them in frightening situations. So you actually care about the characters yeah. more, rather than meeting the characters on the road, like you do in Zombieland, where mm. you're picking up people, and you care for them less, I think, apart from Jesse Eisenberg, who is really good at playing an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like, he is really good that's at that, just, isn't he? I mean, it, almost to the point where you wonder, are you just not a nice is, person, Jesse? Is he just that way? <laughs> like, you know, some of the interviews he's in, you're like, I don't mm. know, man. Iffy, this... iffy. Um, no, but I think also one of the brilliant moments in Shaun of the Dead is when they basically meet the same group like literally yeah. one to one <laughs> it's the, the same, same same person but they also have different plans on how to dealing with it mm. uh and i think that's just a brilliant way of being like yeah there are different ways to go about the situation and some plans some pan out plans. and some just don't and in this case it's a fatal mistake that you would be making yes going to the pub doesn't, doesn't work at all for almost any of them yeah um no, yeah, it's... Uh... And also you have the classic, like, archetypes of, like, the one, the person that gets scared and wants to... Uh, yeah, you got the selfish person. Yeah. The, I mean, the whole shebang, funny guy. But I don't mind. Like, it's done no, well. It's done well. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a classic rewatch. It's, mm. it's very easy to put on and just enjoy. Yeah. I think I like it as much as Hot Fuzz. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how I could pick a favourite. I prefer The World's End the least. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I said, that's like dark. Yeah. And it takes dark subject matter and tries to make dark comedy of it, which I think is just a bit too much, where zombies mm. are a little bit more lighthearted, where you can kind of. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. No, The World's End is a bit. doesn't feel as uh, holistically good. Yeah, it's not as funny. I think like it's mm-hmm. it's quite somber. Yeah, you know, a lot of places where you're like, oh right, okay, this, this, is, is, this is sad. sad. Yeah, he's yeah. actually in a very sad place. <laughs> um, so it's a real world problem. Yeah, put into like alien invasion rather than mm-hmm. problems like just little things. Like I mean, yeah, bad promotions in Hot Fuzz or breaking up with your girlfriend in Shaun of the Dead mm. compared to like mental health issues a lot yeah. harder to take into that direction especially when that came out it was much more taboo to talk about that kind of stuff mm. um no interesting 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 no but i mean they're they're brilliant yeah they're, they're all funny yeah, yeah, yeah. um i, I would say hot fuzz is my my favorite my favorite of the three fair it's but i, I think that's most. also like the one that i've seen first yeah and then most of all uh three of them yeah. Mm. In terms of zombie films, though, I mean, Resident Evil, classic zombie franchise. Yeah. It comes from video games, which is the other thing that we do. Yeah. You've seen the movies? I, d- <laughs> I actually have this the is, first four on DVD. This is a thing. I couldn't tell you which one I've seen. I've definitely Desert seen... Desert City, Under a Complex, or Prison. <laughs> they all have very distinct... Under a complex, I would say. So that's the first one. Okay. Where they're like, there's the dogs. Yeah, then... definitely not Desert City. Okay, so this the city... No, no, Desert City no, where I had a comment. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the, the first one desert. is like under the complex in Raccoon City. Yeah. The second one is in Raccoon City. Uh-huh. And they've got like Nemesis and stuff. They've got like, some good stuff there. Uh-huh. Third one, inexplicably, is in a desert. Just outside of the city. Presumably, like, the Nevada desert or something. Uh-huh. I'm sure they actually tell you in the film. It's very hard to pay attention to those movies. <laughs> and the fourth one is... 
in a, on a boat? No, it's in a prison. It's in a prison. Uh huh. And then a boat. And then a boat. Maybe the boat's in the third one, honestly. No, the boat's definitely in the fourth one. Okay. Because that's the whole point of that, is they're trying to get off in a plane. Mm-hmm. Fifth one oh. really reduces the scale, and they go to, like, a complex in Russia or something underground again, which has cities in the complex to simulate oh. outbreaks. Interesting idea. Does it warrant a whole tour of film? No. Nope. <laughs> um, also, the advertising for that was awful, because it was like, it's around the world, but it's not around the world. They're in different cities in each complex. Ah. Uh. And then the safe one. Yeah, why would you make another one after that? Money. I, I don't know how they're getting a budget for these. Mm. Who's watching these films? Admittedly, I did watch the sixth one. Not in cinemas, though. I'm not insane. I assume they ha- they just have a fan base that they can go off of. Go for, yeah. No, I think it's like, with, with stuff like run, that, yeah. it, is, it is such a niche genre that you know yeah. the people who... You will have those people go and watch the film. In saying that, though, I think you could take... Th- the first two I actually, Guilty Pleasure, enjoy. Mm-hmm. I think they're good films that focus on the, the zombies, the characters, and then the larger issues equally mm-hmm. pretty well. Yeah. And the first one has that whole weird amnesia memory stuff, which can... I feel I always think whenever that's in a film, when someone like, can't remember, that's great for the first viewing. Yeah. After that, th- it's annoying. Because you're like, yeah, we know who you are. You know who you are. Just Figure it out again, you know. Yeah, waste time. fair enough, fair enough. Um, and then the, the rest of the films, I think you could take 30 minutes from each movie, <laughs> which is great. The okay. rest of it can go. Because I, I really like the idea. It's a unique idea of like, okay, so it's a weapons manufacturer has yes. built these like, so we built Tokyo and sold it to, so they like say like, oh, we built that and sold it to China. Yeah. And they've shown China be like, look, we've done an outbreak in Japan. You want this virus, that, yeah. a bioweapon. That's And smart. then they've, been like oh we've built shanghai and they'll show it to the japanese military and then we go to new york should we show it to the russians and moscow so we show it to the americans yeah and that's how they're selling the bio thing yeah then it's let out and there's this corporation that's in their little safe bunkers and they're all fine mm-hmm. that's a really interesting idea that's really smart yeah the film around that is terrible <laughs> man which is a shame because i really like that kind of meta approach to it and the i mean that's more of a narrative on corporations Oh, yeah, and how they play the world, social. really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. which is a really unique thing, which I don't yeah. think any film has done Ooh. to a good extent. Interesting. Um, that at really, least that just really on. made me think of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, the, the point I'm at right now with the two families and, like, two, where... The Braithwaite's and, and... The Greys. The Greys. And you're playing both of them against each other. Yeah. That's smart. That's very it's, it's smart. Good and just... But I think that's also definitely social commentary on warfare and how mm. it's one of the biggest businesses in the world. You know, and yeah. so many people make so much money off of people killing each other. each other. Especially now, I think, like, if you look at the American military, I'm mm-hmm. probably less so in this current climate, yeah. but they're, like, there's no real wars going on. Like, yeah. of a large scale, they're costing what they should cost. Yeah. And yet, we're still constantly paying for, like, up-to-date weaponry, yeah. just in case. I think that's why it's such good business in terms yeah. of that regard. Um, I mean, that's the whole thing, like, nuclear warheads. You're like... You're never going to use them. Especially, like, there's so many. What They have rockets, what, in the oh, UK Oh, the UK's has... brilliant. Right, so we yeah. have... Um, six? Six missiles. Yeah. And a couple hundred warheads. Yeah. With no way to launch the warheads, because we only have six missiles. Why? It doesn't make sense. So even, like, if we went, like, if we're nuclear war, A, we would be annihilated instantly. <laughs> um, but also we have no Everyone way to actually would. get rid of our nukes that we have, because we'd have to build missiles Oh man. to fire the nukes on. It's a stupid system. But I think, like, in terms of weapons and stuff, a good film for that is War Dogs. Uh-huh. Which straddles line between comedy and oh yes, uh, political commentary really well. Yes, um, really good film. I think I prefer it to Lord of War, which is a bit dated and Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Yeah. Eh, not a, not not a such. I mean, it's a classic opening with a bullet. You, you see it everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> all over those YouTube uh, analyses videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I think War Dogs is a good commentary on that. But in terms of it, within the zombie universe, there's an interesting dynamic that could be at play there. Which yeah. Resident Evil is 
yet to fulfill. Maybe in the seventh film. Yeah. Film. No, I think I think it is a an interesting point to have like the the zombie as a biological weapon rather than it is yeah. the threat. And it allows also like I mean there's like special zombies that mm-hmm. you get in video games, which makes sense because Resident Evil is a video game. Yeah. Um, but they've got like more the, evolved the liquors, which are blind, but uh-huh. uh, they've got a huge tongue, hence the name. But they're like huge Jerry-sized monsters that are coming mm. after you. So that's kind of dangerous. Adds to it, yeah. So you had, yeah. you've got l- l- slow lumbering zombies, mm. um, and you've got these actually more threatening things within that. So that's what I would actually like to see. Like if you have a slow zombie movie, and then the sequel is the zombies evolve. Like they're getting smarter. They maybe I hate getting to faster. Say Resident Evil, but yes, yeah, so like by the fourth film, they are running zombies. Yeah. Um, so That's maybe cool Resident Evil is the to... best zombie quadrilogy or whatever that's <laughs> an- anthology at this point probably yeah no especially in terms of like scaling up that would probably make the most sense yeah uh, why you would keep going is because the threat actually changes so it's not just like different characters in the same situation or like yeah, yeah, yeah. completely different scenarios but like you actually have the connection between each, each each film is really and it's just like well that's us progressively we'll, I'll force Jonas to watch Resident Evil while I sit here and watch something better <laughs> no well, we, I mean we, you we said watch. you enjoy the first two I so I, I can at least watch I, this watch thing, I enjoy a lot of all of them I have to, it's yeah. just bits oh. we can watch like compilations like skip I, through to the yeah, good yeah, scenes yeah, I'll be like oh we'll just uh, <laughs> it's the last ten minutes because we don't usually do that with any films no of course we always especially not watch. like Star Wars there is scenes in Star Wars that are exceptional and warrant watching just that scene. I maintain, right? Very it's in our topic, banter but... section. If you haven't found that um, that part of our channel yet, we have, we a, have a... Star Wars. And... Oh yes, we do. I we know. do. <laughs> like... um, yeah, in the playlists, we've we've got our recreation. Mm. Okay. So check that out. I can quote it by now. We should redo it then. We should maybe that's our next one after Lord of the Rings. One. That that will be our next re- no, remake. No, I think a, a scene I thoroughly enjoy. That's one of my perfect. favorite scenes in Star Wars yeah. is um, the f- the first scene with Snoke in the Last Jedi. Oh yes, it's great. It is quintessential Star Wars. It's what the whole film should have been. The rest of the film is absolute trash, <laughs> but that one scene is brilliant. So I watched that one scene up until. Oh no, the first the first scene with Snoke. So, the first scene yeah, with Snoke, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, where he's ridiculing <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yeah. And there's, oh, so like, you've kind of, I mean, he's been a huge head, mm-hmm. and this is the first time you really see him in the, in the flesh, in the mm-hmm. CG. Um, and he does that, like, Kylo Ren stands up, and Kylo Ren to this point has been the only real villain mm-hmm. that we've seen, and he like, lightnings the floor, it bounces up and just knocks Kylo Ren to his butt, and you're like, this is a guy who is threatening, you know? Mm. Turns out he's Palpatine, who knew? Wait, should have been Darth Plagueis. <sighs> you know, it should have been an ancient Sith Lord, and that's, so you're like, wow, okay, this is someone to be reckoned with. And they kind of tore that the second time scene, where he's just flicking the lights around like it's nothing, you know. Mm. You've got Rey, who is ridiculously overpowered. And she's, like, going for the lightsaber, and he's just like, nope, hits her in the head with it. We got into having none something of it. now. And then it just changed. And that's, we're stopping. We're stopping. So we're stopping the video. <laughs> they, they wasted. We could go on for hours. But that one scene is brilliant. So, yeah, definitely... I think that's actually one thing zombie films don't do well. Huh. It's fine, like, the zombie films, there's not a lot of watchable scenes in zombie movies in terms of just this one scene stands out. Yeah. Because it's more of a social commentary thing. Yeah, I you think, I think a, zombie, a zombie doesn't really warrant a good fight scene, you know? Never. Because it usually is running or getting run over. Uh, so you don't... Act, yeah, because they're not smart, they don't ever use, like... Fighting Nothing techniques and that, yeah. so like it's 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 always grappling, which is not, not interesting. interesting. Like it can be scary and all that, but it's not like There's I want to see I'd this go fight. Nothing I go rewatch and be like, I just want to see this one scene from a zombie film. Yeah, that's rare. Hmm. Much fair play. Hmm. I did in twenty eight weeks later when he tilts the the, the helicopter, helicopter and like just like mows down the zombies. That was brilliant. I was like, yes, good use of this this guy because yeah. we hardly ever see him outside of his chopper, so you well, know. He's, he's yeah, like, never. <laughs> <laughs> but he does know how to use it, so yeah. 
Very good. Very good. Right. Maybe ending it there. Maybe ending it there indeed. We'll go watch Resident Evil. We shall. Get past chapter three of uh, Red Dead. Because, mm. you know, we've been there for a while. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's time to get on. We're hope, hope you're staying safe, staying inside, yeah. enjoying our videos. Don't get infected with rage uh, and zombieism. If you do, just lock your door from the inside, please. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Anyways. Leave a like, subscribe, click that bell icon. And share it with your friends. Especially share the news that we are not DIY car mechanic We're experts. Car mechanic experts. We are now. We <laughs> the car is still sitting there without a battery. Anymore. Exactly. Right. No, but have a nice day. Bye.